Hello again. Right, here we are with part two of this. This is the drawing look. Let me show you the reference picture. Not that it means anything. There's not much colour in there. Um, my intention with adding um, watercolour to this drawing, the reference colour is a fairly wintry scene anyway. The reference colour, sorry, the reference picture is what I meant. It's a fairly wintry scene, so it's going to be a cold... Um, a cold looking um, uh, picture when it's finished. So what I'm gonna do is really crack on with this and I'm not gonna be too precious. This is a, with a lot of my stuff, what I like to do is to get the the sky in first because if it's a, a, a full size piece, i.e. not in my sketchbook, the, the sky tends to be the largest area of wet paint anyway. Um, and so it takes longer to dry, so that's the one I like to get down first. Um, let's put some... that. The colour I mixed for this sky was cobalt blue with some indigo in, and now I've just picked up a bit of Payne's Grey, and I just want to, to try and get that in. Um, on the reference picture, which you can probably see there, just sticking out at the top tantalizingly um there really isn't much color and the main areas of color are in the buildings but i want to um i want to try and i'm going to put this kind of pale wash almost it's almost a sky color wash um like a gray Uh, Payne's grey, bluey, bluey kind of a, a, a shade um, to show the trees which are there. Um, and to be fair, I'm, I'm, I'm actually winging this a bit because what I want to do is to try and just get some, um, get some, some suggestion of the snow in there um, let's put some some along there and along tell you what let's have this you see people think I'm being a bit uh, a bit precious when I say I make this up as I go along but I really do um, and I'm not even that well prepared. Oh, there's my brush. Not even that well prepared. Um, I haven't got any mixes prepared. Um, so I'm going to mix. Where's it gone? Oh, it's covered up there. Um, mix kind of a... I've just put some um, yellow ochre in with the, the stone mix. The, the, the grey mix and I want to want to keep it this this dull so I think what I will do look is add some colour to the buildings um, just to give it some kind of colour because really the reference picture has just men. Let me bring it back in for you to look. Look, there's there's not a lot there, um, mainly white. So that plays into my hands very carefully, very easily rather. So let's put some more yellow oak. It's gone a bit browner as this. So let's grab a bit more Payne's grey and dab that in. I'm going to leave the roofs white, obviously. Cheapest way of, of suggesting snow uh, white roofs works so let's put this color on this stone there there you go and we'll kind of leave the top of the wall and to be fair i'm looking at this um what i might do there's this kind of shepherd's hook there so let me just lift out 
the colour that's in there and I can use that shepherd's hut um, to be the, the focus of colour. This is a bit of undersea, watered down undersea green I'm going to use and leave that there. Um, and I just need, I think we'll probably get away with upon up on these these lines upon the hill which are um, the walls, the dry stone walls. Um, ah, picked up some green there by mistake, never mind. Let's, um, let's spread that out so it doesn't become, let's put some more foliage behind there. Um, and just to put some colour in, let's, that colour that's gone a bit weird there, look, that was actually a bit of um, quinacridone gold. Let's pull these shadows out just a little bit. Put some colour in there. I'm just picking up, but then it, oh, too much on there, look, that's far too strong, but you know what? Let's let's embrace that mistake to lapse into artistic waffle um, and utilise the colour. Um, and you know what? That's taken what five or six minutes. I'm actually I'm actually really quite happy with with how it looks as it is. I can't see what that I'd do much more to it. I might. Um, I might be very tempted um, because on the reference picture there's no real let's put some some darker color in there look where the windows are just to to break them out a bit and in there um, I've seen some fantastic work on Instagram lately um, where where the chap who, who paints he just lets let's he puts washes everywhere and he's not that bothered about paint running and, and you know, and a run across. Um, I wish I was brave enough to do that, but my designer's mind kicks in every time to um, think, no, I've got to keep the colour into the, let's put some, make this a bit darker, this wall, and it'll pull it away from, from that building at the back. There's some really nice stuff happening in these washes there, so I'm really tempted not to not to do much more and try and try and spoil run the risk of kind of spoiling um, something that I'm fairly happy with. The only thing I might do is to that's not dark enough look. It's actually nearly the same colour as the sky. So I'm mixing some Payne's Grey there with um, some Sienna, a brownish mix to make a, a nice, there you go. And we'll just make the these poles stand out. Fill this in a bit so that there are, there's not much. I've indicated the the tones there on the drawing with um, with the hatching. Darken this up. You've got to keep an eye on your washes. Um, it's easy to do on a on a sketchbook page um, and and try and keep your eye on your washes as they're drying that that they're not getting too dry because I love. See, for me, I think I may have over-egged the pudding with this dark stuff there, shall I? Let's just lift off that wet stuff. Yeah. Because the dark stuff, the dark paint has uh, kind of... Um, it's killed... It's killed the, um, the inclines that are under there. 
So I think what I'm going to do, you see, just before I switch off, because we're up to 10 minutes now, and I set myself a target of 10 minutes. For me, the most successful bit is what's happened down here. This wonderful, where it's all run in there. And these are accidents. I didn't I didn't design that. Um, I probably when this dries and lightens up, I might go around it with some heavier lines. But uh, for now, I'm, I'm quite, quite happy with that. The only thing I'm not happy with is that that, see, I can, this chap I was telling you about, it just leaves things as they are. There's wet paint, must take a week and a half to dry. He uses that wet a wash. Um, but what he does is fantastic. And if I can remember, I'll mention him on my next, or I might put it in the notes. Um, he's on Instagram. Fantastic loose pen style and even looser um, washes. But what annoyed me there, and my again, my designer's mind, the tidying up bit of my designer's mind, the green wash I'd put on the shepherd's hut had kind of bleached into the ground there. So I need it to... And what I've done there is take all the moisture off, look. Um, lift it out. Some of the stuff, but there you go. I'm into fiddling. I actually quite like that. I liked it better a few minutes ago. Um, but there you go. That's that's probably where I shall leave this wintry scene. Somewhere up near, um, it's a place called Keld, I think, up in up in Upper Swaledale. If it's not there, it's certainly around in the dale somewhere. Um, and leave that for now. And see you on the next one. Thanks again for looking. Bye.